giving us this opportunity to be here. Uh, when I was asked to talk on approach to fluid in the chest, I said chest is a big space and where do I speak in 20-30 minutes on all fluids? Do I talk on pulmonary edema? Do I talk on pericardial effusion? Or do I talk on fluid on the chest and even a vesicle or a bullus? And therefore I have chosen to talk on the most common areas that the fluid gets accumulated and I think that's a fluid in the pleural cavity and I think I'll restrict my discussion uh, largely to the fluid in the pleural cavity. I'm sure we will have normally an approach uh, to start from the history but here is the topic that tells us that there's already a fluid in the chest. So I thought I'll start with the physical examination first to confirm that there is a fluid in the chest and then get on to probably an analysis of history to see what must be the etiology. Uh, well, we know that uh, the uh, findings on the chest are often confused with uh, many other etiologies and pathologies and I think a pneumonia and an effusion may look similar. Uh, even in effusion you might have a bronchial breathing uh, and pneumonia of course. Uh, you might have some foreign sounds as a pleural rub and of course a crepitations in pneumonia. So, so many times the signs overlap each other and of course when you saw atelectasis or collapse the signs are almost similar that you have an impaired node and you have a diminished air entry and you have no foreign sound. But what is most important is a pleural distribution of physical signs which means that we, we all have learnt in anatomy a surface anatomy and the lungs have a lobar distribution which means that the upper lobe on the right side is almost anteriorly two-third and the lower lobe is all, all posteriorly and the middle lobe lies in the lower part of the front of the chest. That's a lobar distribution. Plural distribution doesn't follow that and I think more than talking about the signs uh, which will be similar in atelectasis pneumonias but I think it will be very important to decide whether you have a plural distribution. Of course the mediastinal shift tells you how much is the fluid and then it's important to find out whether a plural effusion has an accompanying lung lesion. We will see how that is very, very important. And then, of course, the general examination in general is important to pick up a probable etiology. For example, there could be a malnourished child with a pleural effusion is different than a well-nourished child with a pleural effusion. And I'll show you the type of cases that we normally get. And even a simple nutrition. For example, a malnourished child is almost never uh, will have a tuberculous pleural effusion because tuberculosis is a hypersensitivity reaction and in a good immunity you get that kind of reaction. In a malnourished child you won't get a tuberculous pleural effusion uh, and so on. So I think each of this is very important. Uh, many children with uh, a pleural effusion may not look sick. On the other hand a child with empyema would look very very sick. There may be many other signs and the point that I'm making is that uh, a good clinician should behave like an undergraduate which means study from him.